Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my glass studio. In this video, I'd like to show you how to make this beautiful piece of glass with all this fun decroic. We've titled it Retro. This project is 8 inches by 8 inches across. The base layer is a piece of clear glass, and then the design layer is made up of a whole bunch of different pieces. I knew what colors I wanted to use, the blue and the green, and then I introduced some other colors as I worked, but I wasn't quite sure exactly how I wanted this design to shape up. So I decided to take my eight inch square, place it on a piece of paper, and draw the outside shape. I love the idea of using this apple green in the piece of art. So I thought, well, let me just cut a nice chunk of this. We'll lay it on the pattern, see how it fits, and then we'll go from there. So many of my projects are made with a pattern. So this is really fun to just let the design kind of grow organically based on the material I'm gonna use. I'm taking this piece of green. I like the idea of it kind of, this wedge working its way into the artwork so that it kind of all makes that regular old square shape that's kind of can be boring, makes it a lot more interesting by having that green kind of jut in from the corner. Now I'm gonna introduce this transparent blue because I like the way it looks with the green. One of my favorite things about working with glass is that you can work with both transparent and opaque material so that when the light goes through the piece of art it looks different whether depending upon what type of glass you've used and that is always really exciting. I place that extra piece of green under the blue so it wouldn't wiggle when I'm cutting and this ruler has a piece of cork on the back side so it doesn't slide when I glide my cutter along the edge. So that's a really nice feature. This pattern's available on my website, but you might take, you know, follow my lead here and just take a square design and pull out some glass and just cut it and see what you come up with. It can be really fun to design that way. It puts the spontaneity back into creating. I ran my score line, now I'm using these running pliers to divide the glass into two pieces. I'm going to tuck this piece of blue right in here next to this green, and look how nicely those colors are working together. It's really bright and cheery. I love it. If I use a color in one place, I like to repeat it in at least two more places. That gives your project continuity, it shows you know, a higher you know, sense of design by the artist, and it just really increases the movement of the piece and it shows you're reinforcing those colors that's really really nice now here i'm going to introduce this aqua blue which i think is just so pretty it's one of my favorite colors at this point i added a few more lines to my pattern because i'm sort of running out of room and i need to know what shapes i need to fill in this entire square i moved the other cut pieces out of the way so they wouldn't interfere with my score lines and my nice straight lines that I'm trying to get here. And this ruler is really terrific for cutting these straight pieces. So it's really important, you know, try to do your best work on every step. You know, you want nice straight lines, you want, you know, use nice pieces of glass and uh, yeah, just do your best work and your finished pieces will be so much more spectacular. Oh, we got a little breakage there, that's all right. We'll just come at it from a different direction and break off that excess glass. And I guess this one we might have to take to the grinder to get those bumps off of there. Often you're not, you don't have to grind geometric pieces like this unless the glass does break. So here I'm gonna take my grosing pliers and nip at those little bits there and try to get that edge a little straighter and a little cleaner. Then we'll compare it to the pattern and look, fits beautifully. Let's just keep moving forward. I like the idea of introducing some white because white will really make your colors pop. So I decided to add these two half inch wide strips of white on either side of this aqua color. These pieces are narrow, so I'm just gonna cut them by hand. Kind of hold that piece of glass down, run my cutter over there, and then take my grossing pliers and remove that extra material. I think the opaque white will be a nice complement to the opaque apple green. And the blue next to the white just makes for a very crisp, clean look. It's really fun to watch this piece evolve. You know, I just cut a few pieces, lay them out, take a few pieces off, lay out more pieces. And it's kind of cool to just, you know, work in such a way that, you know, I can just kind of feel what I want to use and where I want to use it, lay it out, try the different colors. And if I don't like something, 
I could just change the colors, change the placement, move things around. I love the way that this design works diagonally across that square base. And I love the green, how it complements each other. It's just turning out really beautifully. Now, of course, I have to add a little bit of bling to my piece of art. So I cut a half inch wide strip of dichroic glass. And now I'm going to cut angles to create little triangular shapes. This is a blue green dichroic on black glass. And the cool thing about this is when it melts down into the glass below it, that black layer that's underneath the dichroic will kind of spread and outline each of these individual pieces with a black line. It adds a nice attention to detail, a little additional um, design aspect that really is cool and gives the design another uh, sense of depth. So far this design, this project doesn't have a whole lot going on. So I went through my dichroic piece and I found this pattern with these cool little S shapes were almost like links of a chain. I thought, oh, it's not only does it have the colors I'm using, but it also has this fun pattern. I think this would be a great complement to this project. So here I'm marking it with a Sharpie and then I'm going to cut one inch squares. So remember this ruler has cork on the back so it doesn't slide because we want to make sure we get really nice strong score lines on here. So we have great success when we're cutting this glass and it doesn't veer off and break inconsistently. We want these really nice clean squares. Now the Sharpie will just wash off with water and a damp towel. So you don't have to worry about that burning on or, you know, damaging the dichroic coating at all. That'll just wash off real easily. Now I'm going to measure in the other direction and mark it at an inch. I'm going to make these one inch squares and then I'm going to put these pieces back together in such a way that the pattern visually flows between the four pieces. It's a really fun thing to do when you're working with a pattern is cut the glass, separate it, and then visually put it back together for the viewer. Another cool thing about dichroic is because it has a reflective surface, it tends to reflect other glasses that are next to it. So you can take a piece that is really unrelated to the material you're using in the rest of the art, but when you put it on top, it'll reflect those colors and add a nice additional, you know, value to your work. It's very, very cool. Now that the accent pieces are cut, I'm going to bring in the clear base glass and the design layer and lay that out and see how this design is developing. Because everything is geometric and straight lines, none of these pieces have to be ground. So you don't have to grind unless it benefits the size and shape and the fit of your pieces. There are unlimited number of designs that you could put on this eight inch square. I just love the way these colors divide the space in such a way that make the square a whole lot more interesting than just a regular, you know, square. And now the fun part, oh my gosh, add this dichroic pieces. These little fire sticks are just amazing. I selected one with a pink tone and one with a blue tone because I felt like the pink was something new and unexpected. I call that a zinger. And then the blue one works nicely on top of the green, the white, and also on that aqua color. Just shows up really nicely. Now I'm placing my little triangles along the edge for an additional detail. And I'm turning them in such a way that they kind of create a zigzag pattern all their own up the side. Now let's add these, what, these squares. Oh boy, and this is just getting very exciting. I add a few more pieces down here to create some balance because we have the dichroic sort of in your upper left hand corner there. So we want some in that, uh, you know, that right hand corner as well. The dichroic coating is a little fragile, so it is a wear item. So I wouldn't recommend using this piece to like hold car keys or, you know, to you certainly would not want to serve food on it because the dichroic coating is not necessarily food safe. Now that we have all that assembled, we're going to lower it down into the kiln, load this piece, make sure nothing's moved, and we'll close the lid and fire this to a full fuse temperature. I'm not usually in my studio when the kiln is at the full fuse temperature, but I thought this time it'd be fun to take a quick peek at the magic as it's happening. Look at that beautiful glass, how it's all melting together so beautifully. After the quick peek, I'm going to close that kiln, let the firing continue, and wait until the kiln and the glass inside are at room temperature. Then we can open the kiln and remove the piece of art. Slumping adds a nice form and graceful shape to the glass. 
So I'm going to place this mold inside the kiln and then we'll put the glass on top of it and we'll heat it a second time to the slumping temperature. You want to make sure that that glass fits nicely on the mold and that it's not too big if it's just neatly inside those four corners. Here's the project coming out of the kiln after it's been slumped. And here's the piece after it's been fired. The kiln and the project are back to room temperature so we can go ahead and open that kiln and remove it. Here's a before and after fusing picture so you get an idea of how things changed and transformed with the introduction of heat. And here are a couple angles of the project finish. Look at the beautiful lift and the beautiful shape and the colors, the design, just spectacular. And here's a picture of it in the light where you can see that awesome reflection. This pattern and a bunch of others are available for free on my website. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make retro and you make one for yourself. You can find the pattern for free on my website, plus a bunch of other great free patterns. So get over there and get some. So please consider following my YouTube channel. Would love to have you subscribe. That way you'll see all of my new videos when they come out. Also, please consider becoming a premium video member. We would love to have you. We have new projects coming out all the time, new exclusive content, complete video courses that you are just gonna love. And until next time, happy fusing.